The name Pixar is tantamount to the gold standard of filmmaking, and rightfully so. They have blended some of the most amazingly written and visually appealing stories in the medium. Unfortunately, not all their animated films are created equal, and I believe it's my job to break down the best and worst of their catalog. Because if I don't do it, only 30,000 or so others will, or already have. So let's get started on this episode of Finding Pixar. That's a working title, here on Guru Hub. I'm just gonna throw it out there, Brave is lame. Just find it dull and kind of pointless. It's a watchable but lackluster affair about a mother-daughter relationship pushed to its limits. The story of a princess bonding with the queen after she's been transformed into a bear by a tricky witch just didn't appeal to me, which is odd. That exact situation usually does. There was hardly a laugh to be found and there were barely any bear puns. Bear puns would have gone a long way for me. I'm gonna go ahead and place the Cars trilogy right here in the number two spot. I can totally understand why NASCAR fans would eat this up, but the slow pace and the presence of Larry the Cable Guy does absolutely nothing for me. I just don't understand how you could screw this up so badly. The topic is dinosaurs. I'm already half in. It just goes to show that you can't always trust the pretty ones. The good dinosaur boosts some stunning visuals, but lacks the charm and creativity Pixar is known for. Just watch The Land Before Time or Disney's Dinosaur, they're better. I asked the audience to give me their input on social media. Parth agreed with me, calling the good dinosaur boring. More like the snore dinosaur, right? That didn't really work. Let's keep going. <laughs> Toy Story 2 is a worthy sequel that doesn't just copy and paste the plot of the original. The music, the animation, and the characters have all been improved upon, and it's a fantastic follow-up film. Many would argue that Toy Story 3 is even better than the first two. I'm not many people though. I'm right. I find something new to love every time I watch this charming little film. Wally is so many things at once. It's social commentary on the treatment of our planet. It's a heavy warning about consumerism and the crumbling state of human interaction. If you're a kid, it's a cute and funny movie about a quirky robot named Wally who embarks on an epic quest to save his new friend, mistakenly referred to as Eva. But really at the heart of it, Wally's a love story and it's one that will last the test of time. The Incredibles may not have the deep themes like Wally does, but it still tackles a lot on its own. Juggling things from family struggles to finding your place in the world. It also has one of the best animated villains of all time, Syndrome. And let me tell you something, an overwhelming amount of people agreed with me on this. And by overwhelming, I mean anything over two. Dylan, Depressed Teen, and Thugs Bunny rank it at number one. I'm feeling generous today, I'm gonna do a little bonus for you, give you my top picks, three of my favorite Pixar short films that featured before a full length animation, or were on the DVD extras. Let's dive in. Lava featured a beautifully catchy song that brings out every emotion imaginable. We see the struggles of a lone mountain yearning for a partner to share his life with. Only Pixar could make a stupid mountain relatable. They just do it all. They just get it. Bernie follows the trials and tribulations of the titular character as he struggles to keep a light fixture working. What's really clever about this one is how the writers interwove the story with Wally's adventure. Definitely give it a shot if you haven't. It's a bonus feature on the Wally Blu-ray or maybe on the digital version too. I don't know. Speaking of interwoven storylines, this is me interweaving them, Jack-Jack Attack is a blast and it works perfectly in tandem with The Incredibles film. We get glimpses of the babysitter attempting to gain control of the situation via phone calls during the feature length film. But seeing this little baby run loose around the house for five glorious minutes with all his crazy powers, I and mean, that's just something you gotta watch over again. Making a ranking of Pixar films is no easy task, and it is one I've dabbled in before. It's changed over the years. Hell, it's changed within the same year. These movies are almost all great, and there's no denying that there's a little bit of something for everyone. You want a good cry? Watch up or find Nemo. You'll be a wet blanket in the first 10 minutes. Fancy yourself a little bit more humor? Give Monsters University a watch. Pixar's recent films, such as Inside Out, Coco, and Incredibles 2, prove that the company is still dedicated to amazing storylines and vibrant settings. Thanks for watching this episode of A Pixar's Life. That's a working title. And I cannot wait to see what Pixar's creative genius minds pop up with next. I'm sure it's gonna be something wholly unique and original. What's that?
Oh, it's Toy Story 4. Okay. I mean, so are they just going to kill Woody this time? Because the last one was dark as hell. I mean, they basically have to, right?